The key is to ask the filmers after every shot to see the shot. They love that. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Mike Levy and welcome back to another value field trip review. This time around, we're talking about Canyon's Very White Stoic 3. Now you can pick one of these up for $1,100 American and Canyon describes it as a phenomenal trail bike with no added squishy bits. Now thankfully, they have added one squishy bit in the shape of an SR Suntour XCR fork up front with 140 millimeters of travel. Now before we get to the spec, we're going to talk about some frame details. Now as you'd expect, the frame is relatively simple, but Canyon did include internal and external routing. The rear brake line is external and everything else goes inside the frame. Now one thing that I want to mention though, is that the rear brake housing guide, the first one, the closest one to the head tube, is actually pretty far back. And that creates a large loop of cable at the front of the bike. Aside from that, the frame looks pretty sharp. There's plenty of room for a 2.6 inch wide rear tire and the low slung frame certainly looks aggressive. Let's talk about the components that are hung off the Stoic. And one thing's for sure, it cannot be easy to spec an $1,100 trail ready hardtail. Now, as you'd guess, there are a couple things that you might want to upgrade to once you know that this is the bike that you're going to keep around for a while. And the first thing, well, it's a dropper post. To save some money, the Stoic 3 doesn't come with a dropper post. And you could find something out there anywhere between $100 or $200. So maybe factor that into the price of the bike. The other thing, it uses a Shimano Dior 10 speed drivetrain. Now there's nothing wrong with having 10 cogs instead of 11 or 12, but the cassette that they've spec'd on here is a 11 to 42. Now that's a much smaller range than a lot of other bikes offer. One thing you won't have to change for a while though is the tires. This bike comes spec'd with great tires. It has a Schwalbe Hans Dampf in the back. Now that's an all round, reasonably fast rolling tire and a burly Magic Mary up front both in soft and grippy Attics compound. And those are mounted to Alex rims that use a 30 millimeter wide internal width. We're gonna talk about those wheels later on in the review, but that's a pretty good setup. Let's talk numbers first, and that means geometry. Up front, the Stoic 3 gets a 65 degree head angle. Now this is the same frame for all the Stoic models and they all have the same geometry. There are slacker head angles on hardtails and there are steeper, but remember Canyon's description of the bike? It's meant to do all sorts of things, so it has a roughly do everything kind of head angle. Is that, a, is that an official way to describe that head angle? Roughly do everything. <laughs> we'll go with it. <laughs> all of the bikes get a 75 degree seat angle, and the 29er versions have a 428 millimeter rear end. And if you pick a size that comes with 27.5 inch wheels, well, those shrink all the way down to 418 millimeters. Pretty stubby. Reach numbers start as low as 380 millimeters, but at the other end of the spectrum, it stretches all the way out to 505 millimeters. This is a medium sized test bike and that sits at 455 millimeters. So a lot of bikes are hard to come by right now. And if you go to Canyon's website, now remember this is a mail order bike, you're only gonna find two Stoics. The first one being the Stoic 3. It's $1,100 American and it weighs 32 pounds and two ounces. All right, that's enough talk about geometry and all the parts that this thing comes with. Let's talk about how it rides. There you have it. Those are the details for the Canyon Stoic. How do you set this thing up? Well, it's a hardtail, so it's pretty simple, but there are a couple things to mention. The first one being that Suntour fork, it doesn't have a recommended air chart on the back of the fork leg, so a little bit of trial and error there. See what I said, air, trial and error. Oh, got it, <laughs> smart, smart. So playing around with the shock pump, I definitely got it set up to where it needed to be, but it is definitely a process. The other thing to mention, it comes with great tires and rims, those 30 millimeter wide Alex rims and those Schwalbe tires. It's a uh, Magic Mary up front. Set them up tubeless, hit the trails, and you're ready to go.
first things first, you gotta get this bike to the top of the climb. What was it like? Well, it's a hardtail, so I mean, it feels pretty dang efficient. I'm not gonna lie. I wish the drivetrain had a much wider range. As it is, it's an 11 to 42 cassette, and that used to be fine for us. But I think we're just, I guess we're just all getting softer with these wide range cassettes. Well, is that when we had two by in the front? This bike is one by. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> it just needs a front derailleur, exactly. everybody. Exactly. <laughs> but for a new rider, I, yeah, I mean, especially if you got some big climbs where you live, if you're a new rider, I could see you wanting a wider range. So that might be something you want to factor into the price of the bike. Another hundred bucks for a, a cassette with some larger cogs on it. Now that said, the bike itself is actually a pretty decent climber. Canyon's geometry kind of walks down the middle of the road with things. It's not super steep and it's not super slack. When you get on this thing, it doesn't feel like a cross country race hardtail. There's no doubt about that, but it definitely gets a move on more than something like the Growler does. And I think that really comes down to the geometry um, of the bike. It just sort of feels more like a regular mountain bike and not something that's only geared towards descending. So maybe nothing mind blowing, but it gets you to the top of the climb, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what this bike is all about. It's just about getting you out there to have fun. Um, on the rolling terrain, a dropper post would obviously help, but I mean, this is like an $1,100 hardtail. I mean, what, what do you want? Yeah. yeah you, can't, you can't have all the things. So- Is it also heavy? Is it, yeah. you know, it doesn't, yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, the one thing I will mention though, those tires, they are amazing on the way down, but they definitely don't help the bike's cause on the way up. When we were on the fire road climbs, the bike definitely felt like it was in molasses, you know? <laughs> Not the fastest rolling thing out there. Uh, but again, I mean, this thing, it's just meant to get you out there and get up to the top of the mountain and have fun, and it definitely does that. make it to the top of the climb, what's the story there? Yeah, so Canyon bills the Stoic as a progressive hardtail, but they also say that it's good at a lot of different things from trail riding to going to the dirt jumps, which I mean is a pretty wide spectrum of stuff. And on the trail, the bike actually works really well in a lot of settings. So when the speeds aren't high, there's nothing wrong with the geometry or that sun to her fork that we're gonna talk about later on. The fork actually worked pretty well. Um, when things get fast and rough, that's where the bike can't keep up to something like the Growler. It just feels a little bit more nervous. But if you're looking for something more traditional and if your trails are more like this than this, well, in those settings, something like the Stoic might be quicker than the Growler even, you know, especially if it's smooth. On the downs, I found the fork to be a little bit harsh. Like, are you saying that this is a good, is good suspension because it's an $1,100 bike? Or are you saying it's good suspension, period? I mean, kind of the first one. It's. Obviously, if you've ridden a higher end fork, if you've ridden something like the that Fox Rhythm fork or the Z2, it's not that. It's not mm -hmm. that. It's way less expensive than those things, and that's fine. It gets you out there, and for a lot of riders, this isn't gonna hold them back. The damper, I thought it was pretty controlled, to be honest. I will say there were times when it felt a little more notchy than I would have liked. It didn't feel like it was just stroking smoothly through, through its travel, more like stepping through its travel, um, which isn't ideal. But overall, I mean, I don't think that fork is gonna hold many people back, to be honest. Even once you use an Allen key to lower that saddle, it still sounds like the bike's strong suit is smoother, lower your terrain. Yeah, and that's not really a surprise, to be honest. It's a bike that just, loves that kind of stuff. It's really fun to carve through the trees. We have a trail that we've been testing these bikes on and it's been freshly rebuilt. So it's pretty smooth and it feels like you're on a speeder bike through the trees. It's quite fast. And in that setting, I mean, I had a ton of fun on the bike. Did I want rear suspension and better brakes and wider gearing range and, and a dropper post? post. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I do. <laughs> but I'm not getting any of those for $1,100. So if I have $1,100, I think I'm pretty stoked with this thing, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the components now. What are some of the highlights of this Spikes build? I think the biggest high for me is the wheel and tire combo. Right out of the gate, this thing comes with those Alex rims with a 30 millimeter internal width. There's a ton of inexpensive bikes out there that are, they come with these like little pinny pinner tires and that is not good. It doesn't give you the support you need, especially for a bike like this that might go to the dirt jumps, might spend a lot of time smashing berms at the pump track. Um, and again, the tires that it does come with, those are really, really good Schwabby tires. 
There's no need to change them until they wear out. The other thing, I moan about the range a little bit of that 10 speed Dewar drivetrain. Maybe I just need to do more squats and lunges or something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. The truth is though, it actually shifts pretty well. It's not Hyperglide Plus, of course. It's kind of clunky compared to that stuff, but you hit the paddle, it goes right into the gear and I never had any issues with it. So I think that's another big positive. What about some of the things that you weren't quite as much of a fan of? Well, two things. One is that cassette. So it shifts fine. I've gone over this a few times already, but I suspect that new riders, especially those that like to pedal to the top of the hill, they're gonna want a rider a wider range cassette. If you're just buying this bike to have fun at the pump track and the dirt jumps, well then, I mean, who cares, really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But wider range is gonna make life a whole lot easy for you, easier for you. The other thing, the brakes, again, another value bike with resin pads and the rotors that match those pads. I get it, you know. Those things cost money and they got to try to save money with the spec. $1,100. This, can you imagine trying to spec an $1,100 bike and then some asshole sitting in front of a camera at Pink Bike, like just to be rating your choices. I tried so hard. <laughs> but the thing is the brakes suck with those resin pads, people. Yeah. Sure, they're quieter. I get it and they're less expensive, but that is another upgrade that you're going to want to do. A different set of brake pads, metallic pads and some different rotors. So it's $1,100, it's the least expensive bike we have here, Sarah, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good value. We have to factor in some of those upgrades and changes that I was talking about. The most expensive one being a dropper post. I mean, I think that's a must have for me personally. Um, you can find dropper posts online between $100 and $200, depending on what you decide. So let's call it 150 bucks for that. The other thing, you're gonna want a different cassette on the back, about another $100 for a wide range cassette, and that brings the bike up to $1,350, give or take a bit, depending on where you find those parts. And honestly, once you make those changes, I don't really see much else that you need to change. I think you'd be pretty happy with that bike, and yeah, I would consider this thing a reasonably good value for that. Time to talk pros and cons. Let's start with the good stuff. Yeah, we'll start with the positive first. And the big one for me is if you get it on smoother, less demanding terrain, places where cornering skills and pumping skills come into play, well, I think this little bike is an absolute blast. In that kind of place, the lack of a dropper post, the narrow range gearing and the questionable brakes, they kind of fade away into the overall performance of the bike which is just about having fun. Those things stand out less and the bike, it's just a good time. What about some of the things that you're not a fan of on this bike? Well, there's really only one thing here. Um, you know, this thing, it's not the bike for you if you're looking for a hardtail and you, most of your trails are steep and rough and rowdy. You know, I get that it's an entry level hardtail, but geometry is free and geometry can make this bike a whole lot more capable than it is. But as it sits, this is not the bike for that rowdy terrain. This is the bike for more level terrain, for smoother terrain and for flowier trails. All right, we're almost at the end here. Time to wrap it up. Who's this bike for? Yeah, so Canyon builds this thing as being ready for everything from pump tracks to trail rides to head to the dirt jumps in moderation, of course. And yeah, I would have to agree with that. It's a blast at all of those things. And I mean, Sarah, the bike costs less than I spend at Tim Hortons in one month. And it, it's way healthier for me and way more fun. Sure, there are things to upgrade and you could do that when you're ready, when you get there and if the terrain demands it. But until then, for 1100 bucks, I mean, I have a hard time faulting this thing. If you're looking for a bike to just ride, to just go for mountain bike rides, the Stoic 3 is a reasonable option. All right, so that is it for the very white Canyon Stoic 3. I think it's a hell of a good time and it's definitely a good deal. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more value bike field trip reviews because there are plenty more coming and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.